Hey everybody, this is Old Buck Dave again, saying hi to all of you, and along with me is, of course, Old Buck Dale. Old Buck Dale. Welcome back, man. Welcome back. Good to see you. How's the coffee? How's the coffee? Um, drinking Bailey's. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you probably thought I was putting cream I, in my coffee. I no, wasn't wondering what was going on. It's Bailey's. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm not going to yeah. tell you what I'm drinking, but it's not coffee either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, last episode, you ended up talking about food and walnuts and, I, and mixed nuts and all kinds oh, of stuff. Oh, yeah, like yeah. That. I have another thing I wanted to tell you about. I forgot to tell you. I, 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 kind of, I was kind of afraid you would, so. Oh, well, let's get it out of the way. Here. You want to hear it from what's, you? What's, what else is troubling you? Who, who, who else yeah, who else can you? I lay this stuff on except you? I mean, I, I sometimes forget there's people that are listening. I, 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 when I'm talking to you, I'm just, just talking to you. Hey, hey, do you know where your tuna comes from? From a tuna fish. Mm -hmm. huh? And uh, where was that tuna fish before you? It was in the water. Where you ended up in that can. It was in the water what, somewhere. What part of the sea? <laughs> It was in the uh, cold seas. I don't know. Came, well, do you point. think it came from the Atlantic Ocean? Probably. I'd, either there or the Pacific. If it was sushi, the, it probably came, came or from the Or the Indian Pacific. or the... Uh, I don't know. The other day. Okay, this is, what's, this is what prompted yeah, let's, this. Let's uh, get to this subject. Thing here. Yeah, you're... Everybody's, so the on, other day, everybody's on the edge of their seats here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's often there's a lot of different uh, titles in your local supermarket. I mean, I, everybody's familiar with some of the uh, generic advertised names, uh, Charlie mm -hmm. Tuna or whatever, that kind of thing. But I think there's a lot more than that in some of the specialty shops and stuff like that. They don't they don't carry those brands. So I ran across uh, some tuna. And uh, my wife really, really liked it. She said, boy, where did you get that? And it turns out somebody had given me uh, four cans. They had bought a lot of it, you know, and they gave me four cans. And this was uh, Solid Light uh, Skipjack Wild Tuna. And it says no salt added except where the calorie section's at. It says 3% sodium. So... Mm. I just I just assumed that the the fish itself had gotten salt in it from swimming in the sea. <laughs> that could be. <laughs> so they didn't add any to the can. Okay. But the salt so might have gotten in from the sea. Uh -huh. The sea salt. Well, so it's I'm chicken thinking, of the sea, remember. It's the chicken of the sea. Well, that's one brand too. But so I looked at this thing and this this has uh been caught in the Maldives. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's in the Indian Ocean. All right. Right? That's where you used to live. Well, right. not far from there. Not I mean, far from there. I could yeah. have went there if I wanted to, but I didn't go you there. You could have gone there. Uh, you could have. So so I'm looking at this, and this they're, they're like uh, saying this is the captain. Uh, this is all wild caught. Sustainable. Sustainable. That's and a lie. That's I think a that's a lie too. I think they're still scooping them and getting, getting everything up. Uh, so I was thinking, I wonder if people pay attention to where this stuff is cut. And how would you even know? Because this label could be on any can. So I'm always suspicious. You are. That's... I'm always just, I really am. I think about this. I'm always where are these suspicious nuts come where from? from. Yeah. And, uh, so this little label can just be stuck on any can and whether or not it's sustainable, I don't know, but they were really went to great lengths to say that this was wild caught and that it was, uh, the captain is saying, you know, there's a little picture of a captain. Let's see, what is this picture? Uh, what is his name? I don't see it on here. I thought I saw it, but all in all, I wonder where the tuna is and are we going to run out of those things? That could be another problem one day. Well, that could be a problem. I, I think you well, I think the tuna are getting smaller and smaller. That means we're harvesting them before they have a chance to grow up. So, yeah, this is what's keeping you up at night, also. 
No, but uh, this is val- This is a valid one. This is this is more worrisome than who's mixing the cashews with the walnuts. I got to tell you that I'm, <laughs> I'm with you on that. With well, you you're. I mean, you you got to wonder where it. Uh, like I said, where this stuff comes from. But I mean, I read, I took the label off and everything, and I looked at it and I said, I wonder if this really is from the Maldives. And do they have big sh- shipping fleets over there? Then I think they cook the stuff in the can. I think the tuna's put in raw with mm-hmm. the water, and then they cook it in the can. So they is is the Maldives on an island? Are they big enough to even do that, or is this stuff shipped to some other place where there's big factories? I mean, so I'm always a bit suspicious, but. Anyhow, the wife likes it. This sounds like a research project for you. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting a full report on. I almost don't want to know. I almost <laughs> don't want to know. Yeah, I got a fish story. Okay. You want to hear my fish story? Yeah, I'm here. It just reminded fish story. me of it. I just, it just popped into my head here. So, so my wife picked up some, some dips the other day for a little party we were having with a neighbor. And the one dip was called Smile and Bob's Smoked Fish Dip, all right? And the other one was a lobster dip. And I'm not going to, I won't tell you the brand on this one. Okay. Because I don't want, again, I don't want to have any slander issues going on here. Now you think, which would be the good one, the lobster dip or the fish dip? You got to go with the lobster dip, right? I would think. You would think. If it's. You don't know what kind of fish it is, do you? Right? It didn't say. Well, codfish you know, I looked at the ingredients. All right. So on Smile and Bob, which which was frankly much better than the lobster dip, the first ingredient was smoked fish. All right. Smoked fish, number one ingredient. Guess where lobster showed up on its ingredient list? Number seven was like lobster paste. Before that was, you know, sugar, fat, grease, <laughs> chemicals a mile long. So. So you're also. That, that's my outrage. That's. My I was outrage. gonna say you're also saying read the labels on some of this stuff and wonder. Read where it the comes labels. From. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my. So that was well, pretty much useless information that we we spent five minutes. Yeah, on. but you you I I think we bring it up because you thought about it. I think about stuff like that. I think just I wonder where that where that came from or what. What really is that? Especially when the ingredient on the on the like the main ingredient, mm-hmm. like apple cider, <laughs> it says yeah. it says uh, mixed corn juices, syrup. yeah, and, corn you know, syrup, three yeah. <laughs> percent like, apples. Yeah, like the seventh line down, an apple was spotted nearby, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. like, well, let's get to something. Let's 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 get to the uh, cultural so the, section. There, yeah, we've been so uh, long uh, enough here. So I I know uh, let's let's go to the book section. I know you've you've got another book that you're hot on, and I have one as well. Now let's 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 well, pass, old buck pass listeners, along some book wisdom here. All right, let's put it this way: old buck, old buck listeners know that uh, we enjoy talking about books over time. We always did that, and we also refer them to one another uh, every now and then. We you give me one, and we've run across some fantastic, fantastically good stories that we both enjoyed. And, uh, you know, we've given a shout out to them. Um, the one, uh, the uh, book thief, you remember the book thief? Oh man, that was, yeah, that was, yeah, that was that your was first a, home run you gave me. Oh yeah. That was a thriller. And you discovered that. One oh, actually chance. that's right. You gave me another book by that author. By the author and you, and you, so anyhow, that's like, one yeah. example. Okay. That's one example. So I've been reading pretty much anything I could grab uh, from the book pile and just trying to see what it is. I mean, there's a uh, different detectives and uh, that kind of thing. Just, just to see how books are written. And we have, and we both talk to authors, right? We do. Yeah. We, we do. talk to authors and you ask them why they write the way they do. Why do they uh, throw that? Uh, don't go in that door. I said, no, you have to throw that in there because sometimes that's they what even people answer, like, yeah. they, they yeah. like that part of it. So they add that portion. So I'm always trying to analyze uh, the heroes. And uh, sometimes I think, ah, this guy's just a glorified uh, Jack Reacher or something. You know, mm-hmm. Somebody we might know. Yep. So I was craving some science fiction. I was craving some good science fiction. And that's pretty much a, a detective story or a, a war story in space. 
right? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much what this is. Something like that. It's just in a different environment. So I see what appears to be science fiction and I pick up a book uh, by, I, by who I think is called Lewis McMaster Bouchard. Okay. So I think, Oh, let's see what Louie has to say. So I start, when I, when I take the book home, I'm looking at it again. I said, that's not, that's not Louie. That's Lois. Lois. This is Lois McMaster. So I looked her up and she's a, she's a prolific uh, uh, writer of science fiction. Never read anything by her before. Mm-hmm. And even the cover of this book uh, looked like a, uh, it wasn't even attractive in my view. It just appeared to be science fiction. And the name of the book is called the warrior's apprentice and it's from a series of i think five this is number three okay so it takes a chance and this book to me read like uh, a gentleman from moscow i mean just just flowed wow. and the way she wrote just was fantastic and the hero was not like any other hero that i've read so the way she wrote it the characters and the storyline, which is so different, uh, taking place, uh, you know, in space, very, very technical. I thought she did an excellent job of describing this stuff. I said to myself, my book buddy, that would be me. That would be you (laughs) may find this interesting from the sheer point of view of how it was written, the way she wrote it. And I said, I'm going to save this for you uh, for old buck dave yeah and i forgot to bring it with me this time but I, next time i said i'll, I'll set this someplace i'm gonna bring this to you I'll get it to you and let you kind of look through this thing and see if you enjoyed it so it's more of a trial balloon with you to okay. i think you'll like this let me get this to you and see where it's but this is the warrior's apprentice by lois mcmaster carr bouchard b-u-j-o-l-d bouchard. Bouchard. spell that again B O B U J. O-L-D. Bouchard. 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 Definitely not McMaster Carr. No. That's different. And it's Lois McMaster. It is Lois. So anyhow, right. the All bottom right. line is that I, I finally picked the book up. It read, it was beautiful to read. Uh, I read it sparingly, which I try to do to a book that's good mm-hmm. so that I don't finish it too soon. And the ideas and the characters, uh, and I'll give you a clue. The lead character really doesn't want to hurt anybody. And okay. I thought that was different. You know, he wasn't like your. He's not out. He's not. Uh, yeah, he's not out to injure anybody. He really doesn't want to hurt anybody. Who's that guy but, that uh, you like? Few people kill. do get hurt in okay. the in the adventures, but uh, okay. very very cleverly written. And I would recommend it to uh, somebody who wants to get a little, a uh, little sci fi in, uh, into their uh, into their mm-hmm. genre. So oh. that's my book report. And Thank that's, you. It's I, coming I, to you, buddy. That's for you. That'll, that'll be in the liner notes and that'll be in, in Dave's library here shortly. <laughs> so you have you have finished the book then? I did. Um, I was okay. just reading it, looking at it there myself. Okay. Well, I got a book to talk about. Thank you, by the way. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm, I'm, I've been trying to read a sci-fi at the same time. Also, Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson. Uh, his, his, I guess, the claim to fame, and that he first talked about the metaverse. He, he made, he's the first person that ever said the word metaverse. Oh, it's, it's this kind of a cyberpunk. Uh, I'm, I'm having trouble falling in love with it. Actually, I stopped reading it about, uh, I don't know, twenty percent of the way through, because I got a book in the mail from Old Buck Norman, who happens, ah. Old Buck Norman from Pittsburgh. And he said, uh, he said, Dave, I think you'll like this author. Uh, the, the name of the book is Transatlantic by Colm McCann. And he said, if you like this, then you should read his book, the Let the Great World Spin. And I think several episodes back, I think I mentioned Let the Great, Great World Spin. I said, well, Norman, I've already read Let the Great World Spin. And it was probably the best book I read last year. It was, it was a worst number two. It was probably the best book I read last year. 
And this is Transatlantic by the same author. This guy is just Colin McCann. He's 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 just terrific. Uh, he wrote this book in 2013. All right. Now it's uh, it's uh, somewhere between three and six stories. That kind of I'm only halfway through, so it's it's not a legal book review. But uh, there are three major stories here. He talks about Frederick Douglass who uh, went to, you know, he was the uh, the slave who escaped and came to the North, was highly educated. And this was about his trip in 1845, 1846, where he went to Ireland and talked about, uh, you know, emancipation and trying to raise money. He had a book, so there are book sales, I believe. And uh, basically, uh, lecturing, raising money uh, for the cause, okay, for, for freedom. And, you know, that's, a, that's true, okay, so, but this, the, uh, he pieces together how Douglas might have felt and how he might have interacted with different people. So it's, ter it's just terrific writing. I, it's, it's hard for me to, to say too, too much good stuff about this. Uh, Simon, at the next thing that well the first thing he wrote about was the first non-stop transatlantic flight in 1919 and these were two brits alcock and brown and they left they started in newfoundland and you know basically crashed their plane in ireland so they were the first non-stop transatlantic this was before Lindbergh did the solo transatlantic but uh, this was the first non-stop transatlantic and again just just a beautiful story about the stuff that they endured. This was an open cockpit, and oh. they almost, you know, they almost burrowed into the water at one point. And the third thing he, the third story he writes about, is about Senator George Mitchell, who who led the, uh, basically led the peace accords that that you know dealing with the troubles in uh, Ireland, Northern Ireland, uh. from, like the '60s to the '90s. And it's the uh, you know the, the Good Friday pre Peace Accord that was that was signed in 1998 when people thought this would be impossible to do, and again it's it's a beautiful portrait of this guy and uh, you know things that happened or might have happened to him, and at the same time there are there are women that are introduced here now the women are all fictional, so but there's a story for the. Uh, a woman that uh, Douglas meets, for example, and it's her desire to go to America, and she goes to America, and, uh, and then has uh, you know has a life in America, which which I'm kind of right in the middle of now. But uh, as I say, I'm only halfway through the book. the The, the writing is just beautiful. I don't know how else to say it. And uh, you you just you just feel immersed in the book. So it's it's again, it's probably going to be one of the best books I ever read. So. That's uh, Transatlantic by Colin McCann. It'll be in the liner notes. Now, the, do you have that in the hardcover? Did you read that in the Kindle or something? No, this is this is actually a paperback, so I can give you this one. I, can give uh, I would one. like to read that because I like stuff like that. I think you, you will, absolutely. It's a, basically historical fiction. Uh, it's just written so well. I get to read. Well, I, I would admit to our listeners, this has always been a big, a lot of fun for us. Uh, I mean, we... We would talk about these things whenever we meet and exchange these books. And uh, uh, oftentimes, or most often, I mean, we don't do it all the time. Usually it's something we find that the other person would really like. We, we don't do it haphazardly. I've been mean, reading a lot of other yeah. books since then. So, yeah. so it's, find it's, yourself a book, buddy. Excellent book. Excellent book. It's going to be yours next, buddy. All right. There shall so, be an exchange. So. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we will each hold on to the book yeah. and the kind of three let go. <laughs> yeah, let the buck world spin, baby. Let the yeah. buck world spin. Yeah, highly recommended. Highly recommended. Ah, well, there you go. Yeah. So moving on to videos, I watched a video day the other day. It was called "How Can You Tell the Age of a Buck?" Is that the one you sent me? Yeah, this is us, right? We're bucks. I, I, I was going to say you can tell the age by the by the I, limp. Uh, by the uh, style of dress. <laughs> yeah, this guy's making it too hard. Now, he, he said, now there, he, he was like, okay, there's 12 points here. Now, he only gave like three or four here. So I don't know. I don't know if he's, you know, 
he's he's not a good counter maybe so uh, wait a minute are you talking about old bucks like us or are you talking well about it says okay and i'll listen the it's four-legged one, bucks it's an age of a bucket he says number one the first thing he says take uh, take a close-up picture of his profile <laughs> would you want anybody to take a close-up picture of your profile <laughs> probably not i wouldn't want <laughs> i've seen your profile <laughs> is this the video the video i saw that the video two. yeah number it looked, two it said look at his teeth <laughs> imagine people prying your jaw open looking at your teeth number three is his butt bigger than his chest that means something <laughs> your age i guess the older you get the bigger your butt gets versus your chest i think you got the wrong buck i don't know it said how would he look if he wasn't horny <laughs> something like that it said how would he look without horns i you, you're you're Did not I mess looking this at up? the same video the video what? i saw was about a deer hunter in pennsylvania or something. oh well that's completely different huh no wonder i was so confused yeah. i just had it on audio i wasn't i wasn't i just had it on audio yeah yeah this is this is a uh, this is the guy that wants you to if you're gonna go deer hunting okay if you're talking about if you're in the woods and you're hunting deer, uh, not us two old bucks. Okay, I feel a lot better now. I can take the teeth out and just show them to you. I mean, you just <laughs> lamb on a counter. We'll look at him under a microscope. Yeah, this is his butt bigger than his chest. That means he's older. Jeez. No, I misconstrued this whole thing. I'm sorry. I that's, apologize. That's the difference between the the deer that run on four legs in the woods and the old bucks like us. That limp. The, the limp butts are, butts are never bigger than just. I don't know. I don't know. That's out there, Pills. They can actually go look it's at that out themselves there. if I, you don't I, believe us. I may or may not put a link to that in the liner notes here. I'm kind of embarrassed here. I, should, I only I listened to it on my on my phone. I didn't I, at night. I didn't watch the video. Yeah, but listen. Moving on to to movies. All right. You know what the, about the, movies? We've had the uh, Oscar nominations. I, th I thought we'd just talk a little bit about the Best Picture nominations. We can at least talk about the ones we've seen. Or does that sound okay. reasonable? Does that uh, sound like something we can. Do? I would be interested to know what you saw. What did okay. you see? Well, let let me just go down through the list here. I, I you know I just I just copied a list of the nominees and so Belfast is is the first alphabetical nominee here. It talks about you know it's a story about the beginning of the uh, troubles in Belfast in uh, 1969. And this is through the eyes of Buddy, who's a, who's a nine-year-old kid there in Belfast. Kind of interesting link to uh, to Colin McCann's book there, as a matter of fact. So I hadn't thought of it till just now. It was in black and white also. I did see this one. It was in black and white. I thought it was a pretty good movie. It was, uh, it was kind of sentimental. It was uh, eh, kind of predictable. It, it really didn't, uh, I, I don't think it... Uh, it showed the gory details of the troubles and the pain and suffering of the troubles, probably realistically enough. But uh, you know, it dealt with how one one family and several generations were dealing with, well, dealing with it. Particularly Buddy, the nine year old. So the, it's a nomin It was a nominee. It was and a nominee. I thought it was it. good. It was a good book. I've seen it. It was a good book. A good okay, what's book. the next one you've movie. seen? Well, I mean, then the next one's Coda. I haven't seen Coda, so I can't talk about Coda. Okay. The next one on the list is Don't Look Up. Did you see that? Don't Look I, Up. I did not. This is uh, this is the one where there's a, a scientist in, well, a scientist assistant, grad student, discovers that a meteorite is oh. is headed towards Earth and it's going to destroy the Earth in six months. And they're trying to make everybody aware of this, but nobody seems to either believe them, okay, because, well, you know, they, they want their own facts or or cares because, you know, they want to, it's more important to uh, get on Facebook or TikTok or something like that. And this isn't, this isn't a sexy thing. So it was really over the top. Uh, Leonard DiCaprio was in it and uh, see, I'm drawing a blank. This is what happens when I don't write stuff down. I try to win. But you did see it. I did see it. It was, uh, it was really over the top, kind of a farce in many ways. Uh, Kind of like the China a lot, syndrome. A lot of a lot of uh, a lot of big time actors in it playing little roles, so that was kind of cute. But I think the the real story is here is if you take out meteorite and like insert climate change and make the time span longer, 
It's the it's the same story, okay? Or so a big it, shark. It's like global tilting, okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's like global tilting. It's like nobody believes it, nobody cares about it, or nobody feels yeah. that it's important enough to do anything about. It. So I think that was that was the subtext of the whole thing. But it was really it was corny. It was over. And it the is top. nominated for an Oscar. It's, yeah, it was nominated for uh, best picture. Yeah, I, I don't think it's going to get it, but it was. What else did you see? The next, well, the next movie, I'm going to talk about all of these, whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> the next one is Drive My Car, which is which I have not seen, but I really, really want to see it because it's it's based on a uh, Haruki Murakami short story, and his stuff. I, I just I just love his stuff. He's 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 so different. So it's about a a girl who drives a guy around. She chauffeurs him around. She chauffeurs this guy around. Okay? Oh, okay. She's a driver. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, let's go. We can do some kind of. Anyway, the next one, I think we both saw this one together Dune. It was nominated. It was yeah. nominated. Do you say that with surprise? I said that was surprised because it's not finished. Yeah. yeah. It was only half a movie. Yeah. I thought it was epic, uh, but it was really, I thought, unfulfilling. Having read the book, uh, yeah. you know, the movies. The movie's never as good as a book. They did a nice thing, nice stuff on the sandworms, but they really tried tried to cram a lot of history in there. And as as you said, it's one of I think I think it's going to be a two parter or three parter movie. Yeah. Anyway, so I I think I don't know a lot of good cinematography there. I think maybe that's what got that in there. King Richard haven't seen that. Uh, Licorice Pizza. King Richard, of course, that's uh, yeah, uh, tennis. Tennis, yeah. That, yeah. That, that licorice pizza, haven't seen that. Want to see that. Nightmare Alley, I have no idea what that's about. The next one I have seen, Power of the Dog. This, um, this is my favorite, really, among the ones that I've seen. It takes place in Montana, 1925. It's two brothers and a woman and her son. The younger brother falls in love with the, with the mother. Who's the, who's the star in that one? Now? This is... Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch, yeah, yeah, yeah. They Cumberbatch, said he plays a good part. Jesse Plevins, Kristen Dunst, and I forget the young guy's name. Again, I didn't write this stuff down. Just... So you saw it? I saw it. I thought it was just excellent. Just excellent. Is Cumberbatch a bad guy? Does he play a bad guy in this movie? Pretty much. Pretty much. Well, he plays, yeah, he plays a real man, okay? He's, he's uh, you know, they have this ranch out in Montana, and he's he's the older brother, and he's the rough and tumble guy, and he's Mister Badass, and his his brother's more refined and uh, you know a nicer guy, and the the mother the woman that his brother marries has a has a son he's just about college age, uh, from a previous marriage, mm -hmm. Cumberbatch who's Mister Mister Macho verbally beats up on the sun because he's he's, he's rather effeminate and i uh, will prom i promise you i'll go see this if it wins the oscar <laughs> i guess I, I it's i'm telling you it's 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 a good movie it's a i good believe movie. you i believe you. if it wins i'll go see it all right give you anyone coming on any other the last one is west side story i haven't seen that i i think music musical should be banned from the best picture list i don't know i, I just come on no, that's well, a musical no but that was a, a picture, it was a but... famous musical and uh, a lot of people haven't seen it just like bambi all right well we shall see uh we have no i have no predictions on that because i haven't seen all those but uh if you say uh this is the best one we'll see well that's mm -hmm. the best one of the ones i've seen i haven't seen the rest maybe by the time we do the next podcast i can i'll have seen some more of these but we yeah, shall that... see you you that. have you get twenty eight hours in a day. You're, I never seen anybody squeeze so much time in. <laughs> How you've managed to get every all just the stuff stop, you do? Just stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> if, you, yeah, if you'd get out and of work bed, a part time job, oh my if god! You'd, if uh, you quit taking that nap from noon to four, <laughs> yeah. you'd have more time too. Yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah. Speaking of come on, I think it's time to come on and go. What do you think? I think it probably is. I ran out of Bailey's, so uh, I'll say this is Old Buckdale saying uh, good night and good morning and goodbye. This is Old Buck Dave right behind him again saying the same thing. You heard it first from him. You heard it second from me. Take care, folks. See you next time. Bye-bye.